Is your mother? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna faint. What if I faint? I didn't formally invite you, but I, she I, has disinvited me since, <laughs> but she's reinvited me again afterwards. So it's been great. It's worked out okay at the end. I'm here. I made it. <laughs> I'm really excited about the fact that not only do I get to meet the president and the first lady, but the fact that I get to bring my dad, who has just been my hero and my mentor. So it's a great opportunity for us. I'm gonna order a steak and I'm gonna ask for, well, do they have fries on the menu? You're taking your jacket off, you're being casual? I am, that's how I roll. Okay, oh, the president's walking in and we have to keep it down. My guest is my husband, Mitch, and there was no decision. This is the way it is with us, we do things together. <laughs> hey guys! Oh my God. <laughs> I am Barack Obama, and this is my wife, Michelle. Hey, I'm his date. <laughs> Have you guys taken a look at this menu yet? Don't forget, you guys are on a date night. That's yeah, right. really, right? It's going to be tough to beat this one. <laughs> yeah, it's downhill from here. <laughs> Our first date, I, I took her to the art museum and the art institute, and so I was trying to impress her, sure, that I was, you know, yeah. a real culturally sensitive guy, yeah. and, uh, and it worked. It worked. Yeah, and so I'm just gave, giving tips to the young men out there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll share that with my boys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what would you say is one of the best things about being the first lady? It's the power of the big, bright light that you have to shine it on things that are important and really being able to make a difference. You feel so privileged to be in a position where you can just make a, a, a lot of difference and help a lot of people. And also being able to listen to folks and hear their stories and, and tie those things together. My best speeches came from having a conversation with somebody and they tell me a story yeah. about their lives. We all do share the same fundamental vision, we do. People want an opportunity to have a decent life. They want to raise their kids, maybe send them to college. They want to be able to retire. It's their basic, basic things. Right. And I don't I think across party or socioeconomic or religion or race, it is truly the same thing. So we have to fight for that. If I can share a quick story, yeah. you're talking about things that you have done that have affected us. Our son had brain surgery last year, and that would have been a pre-existing condition. And maybe they would have covered him, but they would not have covered that care. Through your health care legislation, that was something that, that made a difference. I mean, it gave us peace of mind. That's um, pretty good. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Thank you. <laughs> you just, yeah. just made my day. So he's doing pretty good now? He's doing great, yeah, thank you. He's doing great. All yeah. better. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Going through something where your kid isn't feeling good, is we can just, all, look just like, like <laughs> don't don't start choking up because I'm gonna start I'll start tearing up right now. The uh, people ask me, you know, what was you know, the hardest time in my life? They ask, well, you know, what about during the debt ceiling debate and this and that and the other? And I'm like, no, you know, Sasha got meningitis when she was three months old, and I still remember going to the hospital together, and they had to give her a spinal tap. Your world narrows to this very small yep. point. There's one thing you care about, you don't care about anything else. Everything pales. A any, you don't care about anything else. Then you think about all the other families who don't have that For peace sure. of mind or security when something goes wrong. That's the first thing you think about. That's the fight. Having kids will teach you a bunch of stuff. Exactly right. And gives you a great deal of respect for moms. I have to warn you though, at once they reach that age, that they go in their room and lock the door and come out when they're 18. We just made sure they went in, gave them a hug in the morning, said we love you, sure and at the end of the night, no matter what, we bang down the door and says, good night, we love you. Well, my favorite story on this is uh, Malia, when she was, she was four, she was, you know, had a little uh, dance thing. Well, Michelle was gone that weekend, so I'm taking her to ballet on, and I get her in her little leotard and her, little stuff. I did her hair and put in a little bun. We get to the dance studio. One of the mothers there. Right away she comes up to Malia. She thinks she's out of you know, earshot of me and she says, uh, uh, sweetie, do you want me to redo your hair? <laughs> and Malia, who's, she's four, she says, uh, yes please. This is a disaster. <laughs> you know, she didn't want to hurt daddy's feelings. Thank you all. This is, this is fun, this is fun for us. This is something we're going to remember for the rest of our lives. Listen guys, this was wonderful. 
and, uh, and it was so, so much fun. He is genuine, he is concerned about everyday issues, things that, that touch all of us. Thank you so much for taking your time with yeah. the grassroots people. It's the grassroots people who carry the day because you got to have people who are as passionate as the candidate. They are in this because they want to make a difference. They are in this because they see the positive effect that they can have on this country. They want to make life better for everyday people. And that's the reason to get that $25, $50, $100, or $5 if you have it, but to support them in this 2012 campaign.